Amen, amen. There is something about that name of Jesus, right? Welcome back to Black Oak Baptist Church on a Sunday afternoon. Trust and pray that you've had a great afternoon. I'm going to ask you to stand this afternoon when we begin our worship service. A little power in the blood. My grandpa used to say power. You know, he'd get on that, get real happy. And he'd get those little extra powers in there. So I may do that just to honor him tonight. I don't know. Just follow along on the screen. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Brother Rocky and Brother Tom is going to continue to play. You step out, shake someone's head, high five them, elbow. Welcome to the church tonight. Would you do that? After that, our pastor will come.
Amen. 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 Is that all you got? Amen. That's all right. I understand that. Amen. Well, if you're glad you're saved, say amen. Amen. Take your Bibles with me tonight to 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. Thank you, Brother Rocky. Thank you, Brother Tommy. 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. I desire your prayers tonight. I won't preach before you long, Lord willing. I, I want to read you something. I, I normally don't bring anything to the pulpit with me, but I'd like to read you a story real quick before we get into our text while you're getting to 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. The Lord gave me the thought this week, is it? well with your soul. I'd like to read you this story that happened in 1871. Uh, there was a man by the last name of Spofford, and he was an attorney. Uh, he lived in Chicago, and many of you remember studying, and uh, maybe you were in that uh, closer to that day, and you remember the great fire that happened in Chicago that would destroy everything, and this businessman, this real estate man, he went in to try to help rebuild uh, and help people after the great fire in Chicago. But at that time, his son, at the age of four, came down with scarlet fever. And many of you know on that day that medicine's not what it is today. And his youngest son, at the age of four, would die. So in 1873, this man decided that his family needed a vacation. And uh, he was involved with D.L. Moody and his ministry, if you know him, and uh, he would send his wife and his four daughters uh, across the ocean away, and he would come and catch up with them later. And uh, the story says that the man would take them into their cabin inside of the ship, and he would have a bad feeling, and so he would move them closer to the stern of the boat, and he would leave, and he would go to attend to his business and tell them that he would meet with them in a few days where they were headed. Well, this man gets a call one day. That ship ran into another ship in the middle of the night. All four of his daughters perished in that boat accident. This was a man that lost everything due to the fire in Chicago. He lost his son due to scarlet fever. And then he lost his four daughters on the way on this trip. And all he got was a telegram from his wife when she was saved. And it said, saved alone. That man quit everything he was doing, got on a ship and went to meet. And by the way, it's a true story. He went to meet his wife. And as they were sailing across the ocean, the captain called for him. And he said, this is believed the exact spot that your four daughters perished. The man went back to his cabin and it's said by one of his eldest daughters that, that he had after this accident that he said these words when he went back to his cabin. He said, it is well the will of God be done through great tragedy that man penned these words when peace like a river attendeth my way when sorrows like sea billows roll whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say it is well it is well with my soul my sin oh the bliss of this glorious thought my sin, not in part, but the whole, is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O oh, my soul. O oh, Lord, haste the day when my faith shall be sight, the clouds be rolled back as a scroll, the trumpet shall sound, and the Lord shall descend, even so it is well with my soul. Tonight, God uses great tragedy for great blessing. God uses the tragedy and the trials of our life to mold us into who we ought to be. None of you, would, we would not have, Brother Rocky, that well-known song that we sing in churches across America had not that man traveled through a season of heartache. Now, many people will ask the question, and we'll get in our text in a minute, Preacher, why do bad things happen to good people? For that, I do not have an answer. Neither does any other preacher or Bible scholar. It is simply that we live in a fallen, sin-cursed world, but we will see tonight that God will take our tragedies, and He'll use them for His glory. Would you stand with me tonight if you can? 
2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 1. Paul, writing to the church of Corinth, said, Therefore, seeing we have the ministry as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it's hid to those that are lost, and whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake, who hath God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, and has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God, and not us. Listen to verse 8. We're troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up also us by Jesus, and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many rebound to the glory of God. Pay attention to these last three verses. For which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Would you pray with me tonight? Father, I thank you for allowing us to be in your house tonight. God, I thank you for the privilege that you've given us that we could come into this place. And God, I'm thankful that you use our tragedy, God, and you turn our trials into blessings. Uh, God, that we may give you honor and glory. And Father, I need your help tonight to preach what you put on my heart. And I just ask you to encourage us, God, encourage that person tonight that's walking through the valley, through the trial. God, that there is a mountain on the other side. Father, bind the enemy, encourage our hearts in this hour. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You can be seated. I desire your prayers tonight. I need the Lord's strength to preach. You pray for me. We see in 2 Corinthians chapter number 4 as Paul is writing that he's telling the church at Corinth uh, about the difference between darkness and the difference between the light. Uh, and we look this morning that God has given you and I the choice and the ability to walk in the light rather than in the darkness. But Paul goes on to tell them somewhat about that man's story, if you will, that went through tragedy and that went through heartache. And if you read your Bible, and we've seen on, on Wednesday nights in the book of that if anybody had the position to talk about suffering, it was the Apostle Paul. Uh, uh, for preaching the gospel, we see that he was whipped. We see that he was beaten. We, he said that he was shipwrecked. And night and the day in the deep, he would tell the church at Corinth. Uh, and uh, in another place, he would tell them uh, uh, that he had suffered many things uh, of robbers and thieves of his own countrymen. Uh, he would tell them he knew what it was like not to have adequate clothing on his body. Uh, he would tell them that he knew what it was like not to have adequate food and nourishment to eat because he decided to present himself a, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. And we can fast forward to the end of the apostle's life uh, and he would lay in a prison by himself uh, and he would say, no one visited me uh, except for the house of Onesiphorus, uh, a man that would come and visit him in his chains. Uh, uh, Paul was a man that had the authority to write 
about suffering. And we read about this man. And I can't imagine what it would be like for him to get the, the, the telegram that day. And all it said was saved alone. But he knew that something had went wrong. And then to be sailing across that parts. And the captain to say your four daughters perished. With hundreds of others right here in this wreck. Brother Rocky to think about the heartache. And the despair that had to wash over that man. As he began to think about it. Oh but he had a tie. His anchor was an anchor here on earth. But it was anchored that within the veil. And that's the reason he could come and say. It is well. It is well with my soul. And I wonder tonight the trial that you're walking through. I don't make light of it. And I don't say that it's easy. I can't experience what you're walking in tonight. But I wonder is it well with your soul. Of that sickness that God's called you to endure. Of that trial that you're walking through. It seems like the valley will never end. Is it well with your soul tonight? Paul gives us some reasons why it can be well with our soul. I want to show them to you. Look again in verse number 7. He said, we have this treasure in earth and vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. The only way that you and I can declare that it is well with our soul in the middle of our trials is not because of us, but because the power of God. I thought about earlier today what Paul would say when he would ask God three times to deliver him uh, from the thorn in his flesh uh, and now scholars will argue what that thorn was we really don't know uh, uh, but God would not deliver it from, from him from it uh, and you remember what Paul said in 2 Corinthians uh, he said his grace is sufficient uh, for me uh, uh, the only way it can be well with your soul and my soul uh, in the midst of the trials of life uh, is because the power and the grace of God uh, uh, that has abounded toward us uh, Paul tells us in verse number Eight. He tells them in Corinth that he's troubled on every side, but yet he's not distressed. He's perplexed, but he's not in despair. He's persecuted, but he's not forsaken. He's cast down, but he's not destroyed. And you know why it can be well with your soul in the middle of your trials of life? It may seem like you're being persecuted. It may seem like you're in turmoil today. But look at the verbiage in the Greek that Paul used. He said we're troubled yet we're not distressed. You know what that means? He said there might be some trouble around us today but we're not in complete despair. But he tells us why. He said we're perplexed but not in despair. Persecuted but not forsaken. You know why it can be well with your soul in the middle of your valley tonight? It's because the Lamb of God said lo I am with you always. Hebrews 13 5 Jesus said I'll never leave you uh, and I'll never forsake you. Uh, you remember what he told Moses in the book of Deuteronomy? Uh, he said, I'll be with you always. Uh, he said, be thou strong and courageous, uh, for it is the Lord your God that goes before you. Anybody on board with me yet? Uh, you know what he told Joshua? He told him that as I was with Moses, uh, uh, so will I be with you. Uh, how can it be well with my soul, preacher, uh, when everything's going wrong? Uh, it can be well with your soul because Jesus is is promised uh, uh, to be a friend that'll stick closer than a brother. Uh, uh, Jesus is promised uh, uh, that he'll be there on the mountain, but he'll be there in the valley. Uh, uh, Jesus is promised uh, uh, that when there's nobody else there, uh, uh, that he'll be there. The psalmist said, my mother and my father may forsake me, but the Lord uh, will take me in. Paul said, there is trouble around us. Can I tell you tonight that preachers lie from the pulpit when they say the Christian life is easy. The Christian life is anything but easy. I've read through my Bible quite a few times, not really in order, but where God would lead me. I study my Bible in Bible college each day uh, of the week, uh, Monday through Friday. Uh, and you know what I have not found yet? Uh, where Jesus said, Lo, it will always be easy uh, and a field of dandelions and roses. Uh, but no, he said, They hated me uh, and they're going to hate you. Uh, he said, They persecuted me first. 
first and they're going to persecute you as well. He said that the Son of God has nowhere to lay his head. Jesus didn't come and live an easy life and he didn't tell you and I we live an easy life either. But preacher, how can it be well with my soul? Because he did say that it would be worth it. He said those that endure to the end through the persecution shall be saved. It can be well with your soul. I'm not saying there's not trouble. Uh, there's trouble on every corner. Uh, uh, there's cancer and disease. Uh, uh, there's sickness. There's family problems. There's marital problems. Uh, uh, the enemy's got his arrow uh, uh, pointing at every one of us tonight. Uh, uh, trying to put that yoke of bondage on us. Uh, uh, but I declare unto you uh, uh, that it can be well with your soul. Uh, uh, not because there's not trouble. Uh, but because in the midst of the trouble uh, of the Lamb of God. What he said this morning. Come unto me. Uh, all you that are heavy laden and burdened uh, and I'll give you rest uh, it can be well with your soul tonight uh, because Jesus promised to carry the weight uh, it can be well with your soul tonight uh, because he promised to be your burden bearer oh what peace we often forfeit uh, oh what needless pain we bear uh, all because we do not take it to the Lord in prayer preacher how can it be well with my soul, look in verse 10. He said, we're always bearing about him the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. It's through our trials that God is glorified. If I know anything about us, Brother Roger, when we're on the mountaintop, we often forget about how good God's been. Anybody with me? You've been on the mountain for a while and you start to take your eyes off of the reason you climbed that mountain and you start to get distracted uh, but it's down in the valley when you're wrestling uh, and you're wallowing in the mire like David said he was uh, uh, that you can really rejoice uh, when Jesus reaches down uh, and lifts you from the mire uh, and sets your feet on the solid rock anybody glad uh, uh, that he's the chief cornerstone tonight uh, you remember what Jesus told them that day uh, everyone that builds the house on the sand uh, as the little kids used to sing when the storms came that house went splat but the house that was built on the rock it stood firm it can be well with your soul tonight because through your trials through your heartaches the Lamb of God can be glorified if you just step back like that man did I ain't saying it's going to be easy but you step back and say it is well of the will of God be done I like what he said in the second verse when he said in the the first verse when peace like a river uh, attendeth my way uh, oh he said but when sorrows like sea billows roll uh, uh, somehow he still found the ability to say uh, it's well with my soul you know why because that second verse uh, he said my sin oh the bliss uh, of this glorious thought uh, uh, not in part but the whole uh, is nailed to the cross uh, and I bear it no more uh, a preacher how can it be well with my soul uh, uh, because if you're a born again child of God uh, uh, this earth is the closest place you'll ever get to hell uh, and I declare unto you that's something to rejoice about uh, uh, that man said in the midst of my trials uh, he would say it in our language today uh, in the midst of my trials I'm still a child of God uh, it may be dark here but the sun's shining over there uh, the devil may have his arrows drawn back uh, but God's gave me a shield uh, I'm telling you tonight uh, it won't be easy uh, to give God praise in the middle of the trial uh, but the Bible said not for all things uh, but in all things give thanks uh, for this is the will of God uh, in Christ Jesus concerning you uh, brother Don uh, when things go wrong in my life uh, and I say woe is me uh, I just get myself deeper in the mud uh, but when I lift my eyes toward heaven uh, and I say Lord I don't understand uh, but I'm going to thank you that you're in it uh, I'm going to thank you that you're for me and not against me it's them that things will begin to change I want you to look in verse 16 I'm not going to dissect this whole chapter look in verse 16 Paul said for which cause we faint not what what is that cause he writes about what God has done for them in the earlier verses for this cause we faint not but watch this but though our outward man perished yet the inward man is renewed day by day. 
Doctors give us remedies, give us things that will help our outside of our bodies. Uh, doctors will tell us that if we do this we'll be better but Paul said the outward man uh, is perishing day by day Uh, I don't know how many days are left on this body brother Rocky but I'm counting them down one day when I preached my aunt's funeral the other day you know what I talked about Roger that one day we're going to shed this mortal body uh, and we're going to put on immortality Uh, one day we're going to shed this corruption uh, and put on incorruption Uh, I'm counting the days down that I get out of this body uh, and I get a new body where there'll be no sickness. Uh, hey, there'll be no sorrow over there. Uh, and that's enough for it to be well with my soul and your soul tonight. Uh, that John the Revelator said there's no more death. Uh, there's no more tears to stain the eye. I'm telling you, I'm headed to a land anybody else uh, uh, that's fairer than day. Uh, and by faith, I can see it afar. Uh, and that's why it's well with my soul. Uh, uh, Paul said our outward body is perishing, uh, but our inward man Man is being renewed day by day. Uh, uh, preacher, I want in on that. How do I do it? Uh, uh, there's no secret to it. Uh, uh, there's no book about it. Uh, and if you're reading a book about it, you need to lay it aside and get your Bible back. Uh, I love reading, but Charles Spurgeon said that many books profit as little, uh, but it is the Word of God that can uplift us. Uh, uh, preacher, how do I get my inward man renewed? Uh, uh, so faith cometh by hearing, uh, and hearing by the Word of God, the Bible said. Uh, uh, get in your prayer place before you leave home uh, uh, one day D.L. Moody was working during those Chicago fires he was home his whole church was over there working and uh, trying to rebuild his church was close to that I reckon and uh, they was trying to rebuild and one, you know how Baptists are one of the church members came by his house and he said Mr. Moody he said why aren't you out there working everybody else says why are you in your home Mr. Moody said I'm praying he said I never look on the face of man until I look on the face of God. You know, it would be good for you and I again to not leave our house until we get in our prayer place. Thank God for another day. Maybe your prayer time's driving down the road. That's fine too. Uh, but we shouldn't leave our house. Uh, I, 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 I'm not a big breakfast person, uh, but my wife made some grits and bacon this morning, uh, and I say they's pretty good. Uh, but more than my body needed that, uh, my soul needed this. Uh, and before I leave my house, uh, uh, Brother Charlie, I try my best uh, uh, to feast off of God's Word, uh, uh, to encourage myself. Faith cometh by hearing, uh, and hearing by the Word of God. Uh, uh, that's how our inward man is renewed day by day Uh, you know how your inward man's renewed uh, when you don't feel like worshiping when you don't feel like reading your Bible uh, when you don't feel like getting around the throne of God uh, but you do it anyways uh, not out of obligation not out of repetition uh, and you start saying something like Lord uh, uh, thank you for waking me up another day Uh, Lord thank you for shedding your life's blood Uh, uh, thank you for leaving your throne in heaven Uh, anybody started to thank God before and before you knew it you didn't know where you was uh, what time it was or what was going on uh, Lord thank you for leaving all of heaven uh, uh, just to die for my sin uh, Lord thank you that where sin did abound uh, grace did much more abound uh, Lord thank you for loving me when I couldn't love myself uh, Lord thank you for saving my soul uh, uh, from the eternal flames of hell uh, uh, that's how the inward man is renewed uh, when you turn that radio on uh, when you open that hymnal book uh, and you start to walk around uh, and sing the songs of Zion uh, uh, that's how your inward man can be renewed that's how you can say it as well with my soul the truth of the matter is that none of us can prepare for the trials of life that none of us can prepare what waits for us tomorrow but Jesus told the disciples He said, don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will take take sufficient thought for itself. But fix your eyes on today. Anybody worry? Sometimes I'm a worry wart. You know what Adrian Rogers said, Brother Rocky? He said, worrying is like a rocking chair. It's going to give you something to do, but you ain't going to go nowhere. And we can be renewed by the inward man. Surely that man did not know that he's about to lose his four daughters and almost his wife. 
uh, the story will tell us in, in this book that I have that gives you the uh, glory of Gaither wrote it about the stories behind all the famous hymns like Fanny Crosby writing Amazing Grace all these other things that it tells us about uh, it'll tell us that his wife lay unconscious almost uh, on a piece of shipwreck uh, and another boat came by and just happened to see her uh, you know what I think about when I read that uh, I'm glad that when I was about done uh, uh, that the lifeboat came by anybody glad uh, and picked me up and put me on board uh, uh, did for me what the good Samaritan did uh, and restored me unto life uh, how can I be how can it be well with my soul because your inward man is renewed day by day I want you to look at verse 17 he said for our light affliction which is but for what's that next word a what a moment for our light affliction which is but for a moment preacher my trial don't seem like it's just a moment read the next part it worketh for us a far more and exceeding an eternal weight of glory what's that mean the trial look at me the trial you're facing today cannot compare for what waits for you in heaven what do you think it was like when the Apostle Paul laid in that prison for the second time in Rome? We'll see it on Wednesday night in just a few weeks. He's laying in that prison in Rome and nobody's coming. Uh, and he tells Timothy, do your best to come before winter. Uh, and then tradition will tell us uh, that the Apostle Paul was beheaded there in that prison. Uh, and he, But he stepped over, uh, as Joe Arthur says, on the sunny banks of deliverance. Uh, what do you think it was like uh, when he went and got those crowns? Uh, Brother Dom that he wrote about uh, and he brought them back to the feet of Jesus uh, and he threw them down uh, if, he, if I could portal him into here today uh, he'd tell you hey everything I went through uh, I don't know about you but I've never been whipped uh, I don't know about you but I've never been judged before kings and governments uh, for preaching the gospel I've never been in prison for my faith uh, I've never suffered shipwreck uh, I don't plan to go on another cruise just so it can't happen I've never suffered it before uh, I've never been through these bad things uh, but Paul did uh, and he would tell us uh, what I told them in Corinth is true uh, uh, that your trials are only for a moment uh, but one day we're headed to a land uh, where God will take them all away uh, and I'm te that makes me excited tonight uh, uh, that he's going to take away all of our trials uh, and one day we can say uh, this is why it was well with my soul uh, uh, brother John you may be struggling today uh, you may be crawling through the valley today uh, but there's coming a day uh, when I'm going to crawl up in his lap uh, and he's going to say, look around, is this what you's waiting for? Uh, and I'm going to run around heaven uh, uh, saying it was worth it after all uh, because he reached down uh, uh, just in time and rescued me. Do you understand what I'm saying? That one day, we sung it this morning, when we all get to heaven, when we sing them hymns, do you just sing them or do you think about them? What a day of rejoicing that'll be. You know why? Because all the former things are going to be passed away. John the Revelator, Jesus told him in, in the latter part of the book of Revelation, Behold, I make all things new. This place where we struggle is going to be destroyed. God's going to create a new Jerusalem, a new heaven and earth. That's another message. I don't know about you, but that makes me excited. He said, our light afflictions, but for a moment works a far more and exceeding eternal weight of glory. Look at verse 18. I told you I wasn't going to be long, and now I'm preaching long. I need to hurry. Verse 18. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. Isn't that opposite for our human minds? Paul said, don't look at the things that you can see. He said, look at the things you can't see. Jesus said, don't store up your treasures on earth where moth and rust doeth corrupt and thieves break in and steal, but store up your treasures in heaven where moth and rust cannot corrupt and where thieves don't break in to steal. He said, don't look at the things which you can see, but what you can't see for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Paul is telling them in our words, in our context that it can be well with their soul you know why because Jesus is with them I don't know about you but we cannot overcome the trials and the heartache of our lives without Jesus being with us 
and in us. Can I give you a few verses of what the Bible says? And I, I'll, I'll, I'll try to move quick. I'll just do what the Lord says. Uh, James chapter number 1. This is what James said to Christians that were scattered abroad in persecution. In verse 2, he said, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, uh, knowing this, that the trying of your faith uh, worketh patience. Uh, but let patience have her perfect work, uh, that ye may be perfect and entire, uh, wanting nothing. Uh, he told them Christians that were scattered abroad in persecution that day uh, when you start to fall into diverse temptations uh, when you fall into various temptations uh, uh, to rejoice because it works patience anybody need patience don't ask for it we sat in Sonic's drive through the other night and God taught me patience about 30 minutes later to get a cheeseburger that's beside the point he said, when ye fall into diverse temptations, know that the trying of your faith is working patience. Can I tell you what Paul said in Romans 8, 18 to those in Rome? He said, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory of that shall be revealed in us. Think about that when you're going through your trial. That the suffering you're facing now cannot be compared with what waits for you in heaven. Can I tell you what Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 6? I like this. He said, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptation. Did you see what he said? He said, greatly rejoice uh, when you are in many various temptations. Uh, he said that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, uh, might be found unto praise and honor and the glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ who having not seen ye love in whom though now ye see him not ye believe ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory our Bible tells us about many people who faced hardships our Bible tells us about many people who went through hard times. Uh, I, I love what God has allowed me to do. Uh, and God reminds me on a daily basis that I always wanted to be full-time in the ministry. Uh, and Brother Roger, sometimes I forget that I am. Uh, and God reminds me, I'm allowing you to do what you do. Uh, I love every one of you and I love pastor in this church. Uh, uh, my favorite thing to do. Uh, but I can't imagine having the uh, mission, uh, the ministry that Jeremiah the prophet did uh, uh, that he preached unto them people we saw Isaiah this morning about a century later the people were carried away into Babylon uh, when Jeremiah was prophesying uh, and his ministry weighed on him so much uh, he wrote the book of Lamentations uh, but in chapter number three uh, he wrote about hope in the middle of affliction uh, preacher how can it be well with my soul this is what Jeremiah said in verse 21 this I recall to my mind therefore have I hope uh, it's of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not they are new every morning and great is thy faithfulness how can it be well with your soul in your trials because he's there every day you get out of bed his mercy is new Quickly and in closing, I thought about just a few people when I was studying today, getting ready for tonight, uh, that went through grave suffering. But if they were here today, uh, they would tell us it was well with their soul. I, I'll move quick. I thought about Job. Uh, he was a righteous man that had everything. Uh, uh, the Bible said that he escheweth evil. Uh, uh, Satan was the one that said that about him. Uh, but when Satan came before God uh, uh, to tempt uh, uh, Job, you remember that Job would get word one day uh, uh, that a great storm came, a great wind uh, and the house where his sons and daughters were uh, uh, fell and killed every one of them. Uh, you remember that Job would get word just a little later uh, that all of his oak and all of his all of his oxen, they were killed. Uh, uh, you remember that story. You remember what happens to him. Uh, he gets bulls all over his body. Uh, he's in great suffering. Uh, you remember that his friends come. Uh, and then you know how for friends can help you but sometimes they can hurt you and not mean 
came to. Uh, and they said, Job, if you just repent, God would fix it. Uh, uh, can I tell you that your trial doesn't mean that you've done something wrong? Uh, uh, sometimes God will use trials. Uh, we saw this morning, sometimes he'll use Assyria uh, uh, to get us back on track. Uh, uh, but can I tell you, just because you're on a trial, uh, don't mean God's mad at you. Uh, and don't mean something's wrong. It means that God's strengthening you in the midst of the fire. Uh, uh, you know what Job said uh, after his wife, we, we, we point at her sometimes, uh, uh, but she went through all of it too. Uh, and she said, Job, why don't you just curse your God already and walk away from it? Uh, and you remember what Job said, uh, though he slay me, yet will I praise him. You know what he's saying, Brother Jack, in our language? It is well with my soul. Job lost everything, but still he worshiped God. I, I thought about Elijah. I love the story of Elijah, one of my favorite Bible characters. Uh, and I love to read about how he stood against that evil woman named Jezebel. Uh, and he told her all that God was going to do. Uh, and he prayed fire down from heaven. He told Ahab it wasn't going to rain and it didn't rain. Uh, oh, but I think about what he went through. Uh, when after he left Mount Carmel uh, and Jezebel said, I'm going to do to you everything that you did to the prophets. Uh, and you remember he went under the juniper tree. Uh, and he started to cry out, oh God, I'm the only one that you've got left. And you remember after that, God said, I'm with you, boy. He gave him a cake and put him to sleep. Can I say this? I heard a preacher say one time, I've told you, there ain't nothing that a nap and a cake can't fix. And that's what Elijah got, and he got a cruise of water. And he got back up, and God encouraged him again. And then what did he do? He did what we do. He went into the cave, and he started to cry, God, I'm the only one that you've got left. Uh, but great fire fell, uh, a great earthquake came, uh, a great wind blew, uh, and God wasn't in it. Uh, but he was in the still small voice uh, when he said, Hey boy, uh, what are you doing in here? Uh, uh, don't you know I've got a lot of other people uh, uh, that haven't bowed the knee to Baal? Uh, and what did Elijah do? Uh, he left the cave. Uh, he got back in the ministry. Uh, he threw the mantle on Elisha. And you know what he was saying when he got back in the fight? Uh, he was saying, It is well with my soul I thought about those three Hebrew boys they've been in that place of Babylon under Nebuchadnezzar in exile and you remember Nebuchadnezzar built the gold statue uh, and he said bow down and worship it uh, and he put out a decree that anyone that resisted it would be thrown into the fir fiery furnace. You remember what happened and then three Hebrew boys said we ain't bowing down to you sir uh, for we worship the Lord our God. Uh, you know we ought to be careful to do in the storms of life uh, uh, to worship the Lord and Him only. Uh, and they said you can throw us in the fiery furnace uh, for our God is able to deliver us and even if he doesn't he, we, we going to be alright and Nebuchadnezzar heated it seven times hotter took his most mighty men and I like this part those men when they were throwing Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego in the fire those mighty men dropped dead how did the fire not affect God's men but it affected the other men because the will of God will never take you where the grace of God will not protect you say amen right there and Nebuchadnezzar looked in and he said didn't we throw three men in and there's four walking around maybe some of them other boys said hey boys don't you know you're not bound anymore their clothes weren't frayed brother David and if you ask me I'm in a fiery furnace and you tell me I'm loose I'm probably high telling it out of there but Nebuchadnezzar said there's a fourth and he's lacking under the image of God how did he know what Jesus looked like because the angel of the Lord was was Jesus and in that fire they walking around and they said we'd rather be in here with him than out there without him I'm telling you what they say preacher they said it is well with my soul why'd they say that preacher because God had decreed he had promised that he would never leave them and he would never forsake them you know there's only one thing God can't do Hebrews tells us that it's impossible for God to lie uh, you can take it to the bank tonight that he'll be with you always. I thought about Daniel. I'm about done. I promise. I thought about Daniel. He's just doing what was right in the sight of the Lord. And the king Darius, I believe it's Darius. Was it Darius? 
I believe it's King Darius started to elevate him and lift him up among the other rulers. They didn't like it. Can I tell you, pride goes before a fall. And they went before King Darius and they made a decree, Brother Roger, and they said, uh, uh, we're going to make a decree that we can't worship anybody but you, O king. Uh, and King Darius loved Daniel. He wasn't thinking about it. Uh, he signed the decree and that day it was irreversible. Uh, and they started to do that. You know what Daniel did? Uh, he crawled up in his room, opened his windows, uh, and got down on his knees toward Jerusalem. Uh, and he prayed morning, noon, and night to Isaac sing. Uh, and you know what happened? They went to Darius and said Daniel's praying to God he's worshipping him you know what the decree said brother Don it said that they'd get thrown in the lion's den and locked up Darius started to grieve but he had to do the decree he got Daniel and he put him in the lion's den I like what he asked he said oh Daniel is your God able to deliver you I'm talking about real lions in that cage and you know what happened King Darius went home and he started going through the law uh, uh, trying to find a way to reverse that decree uh, and he came back running the next morning uh, and there was Daniel and guess what uh, uh, there wasn't a scratch on his body the Bible said uh, and you know what he said uh, my God is able to deliver me uh, you know what Daniel didn't do after the lion's den uh, he didn't throw in the towel and quit uh, but he kept on prophesying uh, and later on in Daniel chapter 12 uh, you know what he told us about uh, uh, the coming king uh, aren't you glad he's coming coming again uh, up to get us out of this mess. You know what they did with them other boys, Brother John? They threw them in the lion's den. The Bible said before their bodies could even hit the floor, the lions already devoured them. Why was God's man protected and the rest weren't? Because the will of God, listen to me, will never take you where the grace of God won't protect you, even if it's in the storms of life. Even if it's in the trials that you face, God is able to deliver you. Last one, I thought about Jeremiah. We just talked about him writing Lamentations. I thought about him, I mentioned it last Sunday morning, when they took him for preaching and prophesying the word of God, and they lowered him down in that pit all by himself. Surely he was human like you and me, and surely he started to wonder, God, I'm doing all this, where are you? Have you ever wondered that? Uh, uh, God, why, why aren't you here to help me? Can I remind you that he may not always make himself known, but he's always present. Uh, he's omnipresent. He can be everywhere at the same time. The devil can't say amen right there. You know what happened? Jeremiah was in that pit, and that man let down them ropes, them sheep, put them under Jeremiah's arms, and pulled him out of the pit. You know what Jeremiah did when he got out of the pit? He started to prophesy again of what would happen to Judah maybe as Rocky and Tommy you come help me please Rocky as you come help me please maybe when he was in the pit are you listening to me say amen maybe when he was in the pit he started to remember what he wrote to those that were in Babylon in Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 when he said that the Lord said these words for I know the thoughts that I think towards you saith the Lord Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. I bet you them men in Babylon were waiting for Jeremiah to write the next letter. You know what God has to do for me? Brother Roger, a lot of times, middle of the week, I'll get in the pit. And God will say, boy, don't you remember what you preached Sunday morning? Don't you remember what I preached to you? See, y'all get it on Sunday. I get it all week. God, don't, boy, don't you remember what I showed you? And it's in those moments I can clear me off a spot and say, Lord, it is well with my soul. I wonder tonight, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're facing tonight. I don't know the trials that have been laid upon you. But is it well with your soul? An invitation in Psalms uh, chapter number 34, it is the Bible would tell us uh, uh, that the afflictions of the righteous are many, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. If you're in the fiery furnace tonight, he's with you. If you're in the lion's den tonight, he's with you. If you're in the middle of a shipwreck tonight, he's with you. And you can clear off a spot no matter what it is going on. 
I know it's easier to do than it is to preach, but you can say, Lord, it is well. It is well with my soul. As we stand to our feet all across the church, as we bow our heads and close our eyes, I wonder tonight if you need to pray. I'm going to invite you to pray there where you are. Make that seat an altar. Get around these altars. Maybe only the Lord knows what you're going through, but you can lay your burdens down. Hey, Lord, help me to say that it is well with my soul. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your word. God, how it encourages us and uplifts us in the midst of the trials of life. God, we thank you in and for our trials tonight that you strengthen us. And God, that you're working in us a far more and exceeding and eternal weight of glory. God, that one day when we step on the sunny banks of deliverance and get to heaven, Lord, what a day of rejoicing that will be as we lay all of our burdens down for the last time and we worship you for eternity. Lord, remind us that we're just pilgrims on our way home. God, encourage us to stay in the fight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you need to come, I'd invite you to come. Would you pray today? Surrender all to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily live. I surrender. Let me read you the last verse of this song again, and we'll go home. This is why it can be well with your soul. Mr. Spofford wrote, O Lord, haste the day when my faith shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound, and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well, it is well with my soul. One day, the king's coming. Not as a lowly baby, but as a conquering Messiah. Coming to get his bride. One day, it could be tonight, wouldn't that be good? And when we all get to heaven, I believe that we'll say it's well with my soul. Anything on your heart tonight before we go home? Okay, go ahead.
be part of that if you're free. Anybody else, something on your heart before we go home? All hearts and minds clear? Be listening to your phone trees and just looking at the church calendar in the days ahead. We had a long church council meeting today. Got a lot of things planned for Easter, for the 4th of July, uh, Father's Day, Mother's Day. A lot of exciting things. This is the busy time of year. So you be praying about that. Be praying that we can reach people with the gospel through these things. And I'm excited about it. So just be praying about that, okay? Remember Wednesday night service at 6. I believe we're in Acts chapter 24. Don't quote me without looking. I believe that's where we are. We're nearing the end of that. I'm very excited about what comes next. God's put something on my heart I've been praying about. And then Thursday morning we'll have prayer meeting if you can be part of that it's just a sweet and special time okay all hearts and minds clear brother jack will you dismiss us in prayer then we'll go home